I'm gonna get one thing clear, making a video about trying to achieve the lowest punch count for contender mode was honestly a very daunting project. So what do you do when people ask you to cover title fans? Well, there are two steps that I did. Step 1. Ignore it. For a little bit. Step 2. Get to it. While also doing some navigating. Title defense is nothing but a big red flag in the eyes of this challenge, Consider I'm going into this purely by myself. If you recall from last time, I did look at a couple of Nintendo Unity strategies for contender mode, just to get some general idea of what to do. But we can't do that here. As such, we are going to have to be way more careful when researching the lowest punch count. The rules for this challenge are similar to the last video. No decision wins, and that's it. We'll take advantage of round 2 or 3 if absolutely needed. So with that, let's take a look and see how many punches are needed to beat Punch-Out! Wii Title Defense Mode. Alright, what can the first fight of Title Defense possibly have in store for us? An Exposition Challenge. Yeah, what a great start to this video. I write a paragraph stating how this will be harder, and then this guy comes in and says, Hey, I'm easy. But you know what? While we deal with this joke of a fight, this is actually a good opportunity to talk about the one thing that might make this challenge a little bit harder in some cases. Earning stars. Most of the stars earned in this game are usually just counterpunching an attack or having taunts give them out for free. In title defense, half of the boxers no longer perform their star taunts, an example being Kaiser, Hippo, Aaron, and Soda. But luckily, there are some boxers that perform new taunts for us, which allows us to get freebie stars like Joe, Disco, Bear, and Macho. Having said that though, there are some fights in this game where we will have to do some counterpunching. And this is where the challenge becomes harder, because the window to earn stars off of attacks is much harder and sometimes different compared to Contender. And Glass Joe is one of the first fights where the window to earn stars off of uppercuts and straight jabs is slightly smaller in comparison to his Contender counterpart. It's still Glass Joe though, so it shouldn't be too hard, especially since one of those stars needed can be earned off of his taunt at the very start. Speaking of which, let's talk about what we actually do here even though anybody who has done this challenge already knows what to do. You earn 3 stars in any kind of way that allows you to use 3 punches. Wait for him to do his taunt and then use your 3 star punch to send him down in 4 punches. The only thing different about this situation compared to his contender mode counterpart is that we can get the victory in round 1 because we are able to earn 3 stars this time before he does his taunt at 2 o'clock. So far so good. But that good is going to end immediately because title defense Von Kaiser is a much harder and completely different fight in comparison to contender mode. The first thing I should point out is that Von Kaiser is the only fighter in the World Beast circuit that cannot be KO'd in round 1, which means we are going to have to TKO him. If that isn't a big enough hint to say Von Kaiser has no instant knockouts, then I don't know what is. His instant knockdowns look helpful though, and if anything, I think this challenge would be miserable without them. A 3 star punch while he is stunned might just give us the answer. So what I did was gather up 3 stars off of any various attacks within the slightly smaller and more specific windows because title fence mode. I dodge any one of his attacks, stun him once, and we knock down Kaiser in 5 punches for the first phase. If you couldn't tell, we must repeat this exact method 2 more times and we can beat Kaiser in 15 punches. Kind of reminder that this is the second fight in a title fence mode and we already have a double digit number. This is definitely not good. So what about the other instant knockdown Kaiser has? Could that be helpful? Well, maybe, but one of the problems is trying to navigate and earn all of the 7 ways to earn stars without using too many punches. Now, I know that might sound stupid because if you read this sentence, it sounds like Kaiser has 7 attacks total, therefore 7 punches, right? Well, no, that's not correct. There are these moves that Kaiser can perform if you miss a star punch or try to punch him normally and it misses. This means using an extra punch, twice in fact since earning a star on the opposite sides counts as a unique star. I wasn't buying it at first, but Sonic Fan was kind enough to give me a strategy layout and it actually involved using a 3 star punch while he is stunned. So this means we are going to be using both of the instant knockdowns. So the strategy here is to gather a star from his straight jab and then wait a little bit for him to do his fast uppercut. Counter his fast uppercut for another star and while Kaiser is about to recenter himself, throw a punch to make sure he dodges and then earn a star off of his dodge. We aren't that far into his pattern, but once he does a slow uppercut, earn a star off of that and what you did earlier should be done here, with the only difference being that Kaiser must be on the opposite side. Right now, we have earned 5 unique stars, which means we have 2 more left to find. We can get those 2 off of his fake uppercut moves. Unfortunately, he only seems to perform them after his first knockdown. So what this means is that after earning 5 unique ways to earn stars, we do have to stun him once and 3 star punch him, using up 2 more punches. 
So far, we are only at 9 punches for Phase 1. Now, I know that's 4 extra punches in comparison to what we had earlier, but just bear with me. Phase 2 will introduce these fake uppercuts in which we can earn our final 2 stars. And because we have found all 7 unique ways to earn stars, this means that any star punch thrown from Little Mac will instantly knock Kaiser down. Phase 2 can be done in 3 punches. As for Phase 3, well we can earn a star and just use it immediately giving us a total of 14 punches. It is disappointing how you're only able to get rid of one punch, especially since this seems like a fight where it could be done in 13, but I really could not find anything else. And it's frustrating how we're only two fights in, and already the game is dropping a brick on my foot. I need to get out of this fight quickly. Let's just go to Disco Kid and see what we can do with him instead. Right off the bat, I can already tell this is going to be easy. Most of the instant knockdowns or knockouts involve the usage of a 3-star punch. A single star punch into his hook after performing his two jumping jacks might seem helpful, but he only does that attack after his second phase. And it's not like this will be a take KO victory like his contender counterpart, considering a 3 star punch into his Disco Flurry will most likely lead us to a KO victory. He performs his Disco Flurry as one of his beginning attacks in phase 2. However, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to have to be saving 3 stars for his second phase. After the Aaron Ryan fight from our last video, I learned my lesson that carrying stars into a new phase isn't always the answer. So what I did is basically an exact copy of the Aaron Ryan fight with a couple of modifications. What I did was gather up two stars off of his taunt and him reeling from the previous punch. Disco does perform a hook later in which we dodge and delay our punch after to get our third star. I said later because Title Defense Disco is kind of like Don Flamenco. He'll sometimes not attack unless you attack him, but for the sake of this challenge, provoking him with more punches is a no-go. So yeah, he does take his sweet time with his next attack, but once it comes out, you earn your third star. Depending on how you earn the third star though, does determine on how you perform the instant knockdown. If you earned it with a jab, you'll have to delay your 3 star punch slightly while Disco reels over, but if you earned it with a gut, then you can use your star punch immediately, whichever way you swing it. Disco's first phase can be done in 4 punches. Also, little fun fact, if you hold up during this sequence, for some reason, this causes Disco Hook to come out later. If you don't like waiting, then obviously don't do this. Okay, on to Phase 2. The beginning of Phase 2 opens up with a taunt, and just like the start of Phase 1, we can earn 2 stars by his taunt and him reeling to the side. From here, you'll have to dodge his first Disco Flurry and any other attack he does. Make sure to earn your third star off of any of his attacks that involve his hooks. Whatever you do, do not try to counter any of his attacks like you did in the contender mode. These attacks don't have star windows. Once you get your third star, wait for him to perform his next Disco Flurry and then use your 3 star punch to send him down in 8 punches. A much more satisfying number than what Von Kaiser was. Let's just hope that we can continue this trend of fights that can be done in less than a double digit number. Yeah, never mind what I just said. You guys know I was already annoyed at the contender version of this fight, seeing how we were able to route what should have been an 8 punch victory, but instead gave us an alternate route for another 9 punch victory. So, how do you make this fight more annoying than the contender version? Well, you give him a manhole cover which makes earning stars impossible, give him 5 extra hit points, makes star punches do less damage in this current mode, and force us to pay 13 total punches at the very beginning in order to knock that stupid thing off of him. He does have an instant knockout where if you duck and dodge his hippo squeeze and squash attack and then use a star punch, we'll set him down for a KO. But if you guys remember from the contender video, he only performs it once his health reaches halfway. Now yeah, I know he does that attack during his third part of the manhole phase, but you can't earn stars during that phase anyway, so it's pretty much irrelevant. Then seeing how 13 punches during his manhole phase only dealt this amount of damage to him is already stupid enough. After dealing this much damage to him, the only thing I can think of was just to earn and use stars until I can get his health down low enough so he can perform his hippo squeeze and squash moves. Using two 2 stars is weak and doesn't seem to do the job until we hit him a couple more times. Seeing how we were forced to use 13 punches for the manhole phase, I really didn't want to go any higher from this point on. So then I tried a 3 star and then a 2 star and that does seem to work better than before. 
For anybody wondering, I am earning the stars off of his fake mouth opening, seeing as it's the only way at the moment to earn them, and because he doesn't perform them enough, we might be going into round 2. Once King Hippo is at the point where he performs his Hippo Squeeze and Squash, we counter one of them to earn a star and then wait for him to do his next one. Duck and dodge his next one and then star punch him down for a 22 punch KO victory. Not gonna lie, I remain distraught by this number. And even though it makes sense for a fight like this to have so many punches, it's still really upsetting that we had to go more than 20 for this fight. It's way greater than all the other fights we covered, as well as some of the other fights in previous games like Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. I kept looking, but every path just led to a dead end. Single star punches don't work, two two star punches don't work, and any other option I tried never worked. But unless somebody else finds something ridiculous that allows the punch count to go under 22, I don't see any other route that could be done to lower this number. Let's do a recap before we head into World A. Glass Joe takes 4 punches to BP and very similar to Contender. Kaiser took 14, Disco took 8, and Hippo, being the wall that he is, took 22 punches. But if you couldn't tell, World B is a scattered mess, with some good and some very bad. The only thing I can hope for is that World A will be slightly easier with the punch count. And thankfully, our first fight, Piston Hondo, will give us some hope for that. Look at how many instant knockdowns Hondo has. If that isn't a good first sign, then I don't know what is. Having said that though, there is only one instant knockdown that's actually going to help us with this challenge. Countering his Hondo Rush, something we did in the previous video. 3 star punch into Bao, star punching his switching uppercuts, and star punching while he winks during his rush are definite no-gos for this challenge, seen as they use more than 3 punches. The 2 minute mark and the 1 minute mark are when he performs his signature moves and he is scripted to do the third one after knocking him down twice in one round. There's only one huge problem with these rushes though. In the contender mode, the window to hit the instant knockdown wasn't really too bad, but the window for the title defense is not only smaller, but it's frame perfect, meaning that you only got a 1 in 60 shot. This instant knockdown is on the last possible frame, right before he hits you. If you go any earlier, then you will receive a star instead. Don't let the fast variations of his Hondo Rush fool you into thinking that the window is even smaller than before though. It's still in the last possible frame, just like with every variation. I would be upset by these windows, but at least we can secure ourselves a 3 punch victory. A much, much more satisfying number compared to the fight that I'm not even going to mention because you all know exactly what I'm referring to. With that out of the way, let's move on to our next fight, Bear Hugger. Ah, Bear Hugger, the one fight in the contender mode that had the most instant knockdowns in the entire game, now only has one instant knockdown in title defense. The 3 star punch while he is stunned is our only option for instantly knocking him down. Routing any other strategy would be very tricky seeing as Bear Hugger surprisingly has a lot of health. Given this, we don't really have any other choice but to gather up 3 stars off of any attack he does, stun him once, and then use a 3 star punch to knock him down. There is, however, no farming technique to earn the stars. Most of the stars you'll be earning will be off of these dumb counters. He does have a taunt, but he only does it if you have zero stars in the bank. Luckily, he does do one immediately when the round starts after his overhead, so at least you can get one freebie if you don't like going for the raw counters. Just make sure not to hit him the extra time after you earned it. After that though, you'll have to start countering his attacks. Once you get to phase 2 and phase 3, his little squirrel buddy comes out to tell you that Bear himself is going to delay some of his attacks, making the timings a lot more different. As well as inserting a kind of new attack called Catch and Release, which by the way is a 3 frame window and is probably the dumbest one to counter. Unless he fakes you out, in which case it's a free star. I won't go into too much detail on what causes him to perform either a delay or a non-delay, because if I did, we'd be here for a little bit longer. I know that may not seem bad for a fight this simple and very streamlined, but I would hate to crowd it with this much info when really the only thing I can see people doing is skipping it. But if you want to know a too long didn't read summary, he changes his attacks based on what the timer is. If done everything correctly, all three of the phases can be done in 15 punches total. This brings our total punches up to 15 for this fight. Probably the first double digit number that I'm actually happy with. Great Tiger was one of the easiest ones to talk about in the contender video. So does that mean that he's going to be a joke in title offense as well? Yes. Yes he is. Although, to his credit, he does have a couple of interesting things to say here. Remember that magic rush attack he did in the contender version where countering the correct side will send him down for a knockdown? Well, apparently he learned how to take it up a notch. Salva! Oh, 
Come on. But wouldn't you know it, he still has an instant knockdown that we can use. I'm sorry, he still has an instant knockout that we can use. The instant knockdown involves dodging all of his incoming clones and then ducking and star punching his final move. The instant knockout involves countering all of his incoming clones and then ducking and star punching his final move. Despite using more punches, we actually want to do it this way over the dodging method. And that's because he only performs his magic rush attack on very specific circumstances. Sometimes, it's a timer-based move, while in some other cases, it's determined by what his health is at. But for the sake of this strategy, he'll only do it once at the 130 mark. So let's go over this strategy. I earn 1 star using 1 punch off of any attack he does, and then just wait till 130 for him to perform his rush. We counter all of his clones with 3 punches, alternating between left, right, and left. Duck his final spin and star punch him for an instant knockout. A very simple and easy 5 punch strategy to execute if you ask me. Let's see if the next fight also follows the same path. The last sentence I said should be ignored completely, because title defense Don Flamenco is going to be a stupid fight to break down. For starters, he only has one instant knockdown. This was an instant knockdown that was also in the contender fight, but we never had to use it because he had an instant KO trick involving the loop. But this time around, we'll probably have to use this trick on his second fight, since the instant knockout that was in the contender version is now gone in the title defense version. He performs his Rose Flurry attack at the same times he did in the contender version, and this is where the problem starts to emerge. As you can see, he only performs it twice in every round, and on top of that, every fight after Great Tiger takes 6 knockdowns in order to KO. Without going into the fight, the setup that I came up with in my head was to gather 3 stars and use them during his ending Rose Flurry, using 4 punches total. Do that 5 more times and we can get a win in 24 punches. This was a number that made me infuriated, especially since this time around, it's now possible to counter his non-provoking uppercuts and get stars, which are still annoying and make no sense that it could have been done in the contender version. But I figured that I would at least try out this strategy and maybe come up with new ideas on the way. But I got done in 20 punches instead of 24. This confused me until I remember a very weird quirk TD Don had. If you star punch him during his fifth knockdown, it plays the KO animation. The same thing can happen during Title Fence Great Tiger and Aaron Ryan, and I'm not entirely sure why it's like this. My only theory is that it might have something to do with the way how the game checks the star punches when they are being knocked out. It's already well known that using a star punch will make the opponent stay down longer, so I guess maybe in this case, because of how late into the fight it was, the game registered it as over a 10 count this time, but because it is over 10, it stops the fight. It is a loose theory, especially since this only applies to these three fights when in theory it should go for all of them, but it's the only thing I can think of. But whether or not you want to break this down or not, the only thing that I personally took away from this is darn. 20 punches. How dumb. And yeah, it is dumb. I already had to deal with 20 plus punches on Telephone's King Hippo, so to get another fight over 20 is just annoying at this rate. So what do we do with this huge number anyway? Well, as I was rewatching the footage, I did question myself, why didn't I gather up more stars and star punch him down during his third phase? And apparently, using a 3 star punch and a 2 star punch is enough to knock him down for a third time. We didn't even have to go into round 3, let alone round 2. This means phase 3 can be done in 7 punches, bringing the total number down to 15. For a fight this stupid, this number was actually fairly reasonable, and it seemed this might be it for Title Fence Dawn but I still didn't throw in the towel yet. While I was scripting this video, I stumbled upon this very old glitch where using a single star punch while Title Fence Dom throws his last hook triggers a very weird situation, where for some reason the next attack you counter will give you the rewarded star and 6 extra punches you should have earned from successfully dodging his Rose Flurry. This was something that I completely ignored, as it really did not amount to anything. It actually did, but not with a single star punch. So I decided to go into the fight again, but try the screw technique with a 3 star punch, which knocks him down, but here's where it gets interesting. Because we didn't trigger the stun and extra star from the Rose Flurry, the instant knockdown is still activated, and this means that another 3 star punch can send him down without a Rose Flurry. This means that in theory, we can instantly knock him down again in phase 3 with this absolutely bizarre glitch we have in handy. Okay, let's break this new strategy down. We can play the first phase of the fight normally, earn 3 stars and use it on his first Rose Flurry at the 2 minute mark. Second, repeat this again, only this time we are going to use the glitch. Don will now start throwing more than 3 hooks since we knocked him down once, but because he is only at a second one, he will only throw 4. 
Dodge the first three and use a three star punch for his final. Now the glitch is activated. This means instead of gathering up more stars and knocking him down normally, we can just three star punch him at any given point and that will set him down again. Just make sure not to stun him, otherwise you've ruined it. Without stunning him, earn 3 stars off of any move he does without provoking him and we can beat Don in 12 punches, and I cannot be more happier with this outcome. It feels excellent to say goodbye to the 15 punch strategy that was constructed and instead beat him using only 12 punches with the help of a bizarre glitch that would be impossible without. Let's recap on rolled A. Piston Hondo took 3 punches to be beaten with the exact same strategy as Contender. Bear took 15 with the limitations we had, Tiger took 5, and Don surprisingly took 12 punches to be beaten when I thought for sure it would be higher. Let's head over to the final circuit. The last circuit in the game is here, and with that, we only have 5 more levels to cover. Aaron Ryan returns, but this time around, he has some instant knockdowns that aren't present during his second match. We do have some new ones, and the one that stands out is a star punch while he is about to fall down. The other instant knockdowns involving a star punch into his elbow tag might be helpful, and if anything, it sounds like it should be an easy 9 punch victory since you would be earning a star from the first punch, counter him once to get him to retaliate, and then star punch him down. But there is one problem with this method though. Aaron Ryan's retaliation attacks can change in many various ways. At the very beginning, he only does his headbutt retaliation, but then once you deal a total of 69 damage to him, that is when he starts his elbow attacks. Now granted, we'll only be using 4 punches in total to get Aaron to that amount of health for him to start doing that route, but the route that I came up with involving the instant KO does have a lower punch count, so let's talk about it. I begin the fight by gathering up 3 stars from either his left uppercut or his headbutt attack, and since Aaron is moving around the ring in 3 different positions as supposed to being stationary like every other fighter, we'll have to immediately time the 3 star punch into any one of these attacks. That's 4 punches so far. Next, I gather one star and use it when he's in a position to get hit. I did this twice in a row so we can set up our final couple of punches. Now that Aaron has roughly less than 6 HP left, I gather one star off of any move that rewards one and then hit him one more time with a face jab. The punch that knocks Aaron down has to be a jab in order to get the instant knockout from the star. If we hook him, then the window to knock Aaron down with the star will not be present due to his falling animation. The total amount of punches it took to beat Aaron was 11, and I will admit, I was slightly disappointed by this outcome. After the Rose Flurry glitch we pulled off on Don to get 12 punches, it did hurt a little bit to get a number close to the fight that on paper would be harder to optimize than the other. So what do we do with this number anyway? Well I did have one stupid idea that probably would have been horrible to pull off in real time, but I remember Mystery Man uploading a video covering the easter eggs of Punch Out Wii. It's a video that goes over the regional differences, unused animations, and glitches. One of the glitches that stood out to me is when you knock down an opponent, the timer actually continues to tick down for a few more frames. This means that if you line up everything correctly, you can end the round with 0 HP and then go into the next round with, you guessed it, 0 HP. This means one punch will send Aaron down. The reason I bring attention to this is because it made me ask one question. Can this work with a star punch? Because in theory, we can start the fight by using a 3 star punch and with that high damage, Aaron is already at the point where he will perform his elbow attacks. We then grab a star and then wait till the very end of the fight, punch him to retaliate with his elbow, and then right as the timer runs out, the star punch will quote unquote knock him down when really we are trying to end the fight with 0 HP. Beginning round 2, we earn a star using a jab and that sets the flag for us to instantly knock him out in 9 total punches. I was really hoping that this glitch would transfer over to star punches, but what made me concerned is that the clock does go through a slowdown phase when a star punch is being used. But I do not know the exact percentage in which how much the star slows down the clock, but if stun punches are around 25% and if that glitch still works with it, then I thought surely the star could also work with it. So I took the idea to Mystery Man on Discord, but it seems to be that he already tested it. It's a crime shame too, as this would have been the second time that a glitch would have been used to get our low punch count. Now granted, it's not like Tuttle and Stone where it's a glitch that would be very easy to perform, so I guess it's not that big of a deal, but it still would have been nice to see the punch count go lower. Even if it required a strategy that would have been a pain to pull off in real time. After looking into that glitch, I tried other options, but I think 11 might just be the limit for Aaron Ryan. Alright, so the next fight is... Oh boy. Yeah, my head was automatically shaken the moment I clicked the fight button for this guy. To put simply, this is my least favorite fight in the entire game for reasons I won't go into. 
the only one instant knockdown is present in this fight, and that is, with a stun capacity of at least 5 jabs, have the last hit of the stun be a star punch. To anyone who doesn't understand the gimmick of this fight, you'll probably question what this even means. Well, for the people who don't know, Soda has a momentum mechanic where the more attacks you dodge in a row, the more jabs you can throw whenever you stun him. It starts at 2 and will increase by 1 every time you dodge a counter. So that means once you build your momentum up to 5, you can have your last hit be a star punch and that sends him down. Now you start to see where the problem is. We are using 5 punches total and we need the previous punches to build up the momentum. The worst part is that in order to repeat this trick, we need an additional star. So with all of that information, there's definitely no way that this trick would be helpful for this challenge. Well, there is one workaround we can do. Soda's raging uppercuts are scary, but the interesting thing about them is that if you dodge all of them and hit them for a stun, you will automatically get 5 punches as your reward, even if the momentum encounter is set back to 2. So that means, if we have a star before his raging uppercuts, that sets us up for a golden opportunity for this instant knockdown trick to be done in fewer punches. With this knowledge, I looked at the speedrun strategy to get some ideas as to what we can do, and after a while, I constructed the strategy idea in my head and then put it into practice. Before heading into the fight, I turned on champions mode just to make sure we get a round 1 victory, and for Soda to throw a welcome back hook upon getting up, something we also did in the contender version of this fight. I countered the first two hooks of the fight to earn 2 stars and then use a 2 star punch immediately. This will cause Soda to go into his rage mode. He hits me once, and then I get up. Soda is now scripted to throw 3 hooks. I counter all 3 of them to get a 3 star punch and then use it immediately. He goes into his rage mode again and will knock us down, but when getting up, we are not going to counter punch the hook. Instead, we are going to duck it, throw a delayed left hook to earn a star, and then a delayed right jab to knock him down. So far, that's 9 punches. Going into phase 2 of the fight, we dodge his rage uppercuts, and now that we have a star ready for the instant knockdown, we can stun him 4 times and then have the 5th one be the one to send him down for a second time. We are now at 14 punches, and I already knew that phase 3 was going to be 4 punches. Once you dodge his raging uppercuts, him pulling out his bottle should be the first thing he does going into his phase 3 pattern. Because he didn't get the opportunity to pull out his bottle during his previous phases, this causes him to pull it out during his final phase. We hit the bottle out of his hand for a star, making sure he doesn't regenerate his health. Then we wait for Soda to throw two more hooks, earning two more stars. Because Soda got up with such low health, the three star punch will do more than enough damage to send him down. Just note that when earning the stars, be extra careful. Since Soda's speed has increased, the windows to earn the stars have decreased. But if you did everything right, then we can take down Soda in 18 punches. I originally had it at 19 punches because I had him take out the bottle in phase 1, but then I remembered that hitting the bottle actually doesn't deal any damage to Soda. So by switching the bottle placement around, we can save one extra punch with this method. Alright, I know I clowned on some of the easier fights like Last Joe and Great Tiger, but if I'm being honest, I am not complaining when I say Bald Bull was a breeze to go through compared to the three fights I had to break down. Bald Bull has the most instant knockouts out of any fighter in this game, so I already knew this was going to be easy. In fact, it would only get easier since his bull charge timers are exactly the same as it was in the previous version. You can probably imagine what the strategy is going to be if you've seen the Contender video. However, there is one small modification we can do to make this easier. In the previous run, we had to counter 3 frame perfect moves of his to grab 3 stars total. This time, however, we don't have to counter anything frame perfectly, for two reasons. One, we can earn our final star from hitting his bull charge, and two, the uppercuts are now slightly forgiving with a 3 frame window. So after we counter two of his moves using only two punches, we then wait for him to do his bull charge, in which we counter it receiving a star, sending Bold Bull into a position in which we can use our 3 star punch while he's walking forward. This will send him down in four punches. It is also worth noting that like the contender version, you cannot get hit once throughout the fight. There are other alternative ways to defeat Bold Bull in 4 punches, but I decided to cover this strategy seeing as I personally think it's the easiest one. One of the alternative ways is just use a single star punch into his bull charge twice in a row. Getting hit doesn't matter at all with this strategy, but the one drawback is that you will have to go into round 2 since he doesn't perform his bull charge twice in the first round. The final alternative way is to do exactly what you would do in the contender version. Gather 3 stars and then use a 3 star punch while Bull prepares his charge. Whichever way you swing it, you can defeat Bald Bull in 4 punches, and it's a number that I doubt will go any lower. 
All right, we made it. The one fight in the entire game that I was the most frightened by going into this challenge. Title Defense Super Macho Man. Now of course, we've had our ups and downs with some of the previous fights like Hippo and Soda, but what separates those two from Macho is that going into them, I at least had some hope that the number of punches to beat them would be lower than what I expected. With Title Defense Macho, that was 100% not the case. In fact, I was completely lost on what to even start off with, the first and only time this happened for this challenge. For those who aren't aware, Title Defense Macho is the only individual level in the game to not have an instant knockdown, and that immediately is a red flag for this challenge. You can earn stars, but given the amount of health, combining with the fact that star punches do less damage compared to the contender version, it will still take a lot of punches to defeat this guy. So I reached out to Discord and we got some hope. Sonic gave me another strategy that involved going into round 2, which didn't really surprise me, and also had champions mode on. Alright, let's see what the strategy is. Seeing as we are going into round 2, we need to lower Macho's health to one more hit point and also have one star in our inventory. Right off the bat, you'll be seeing Macho perform a pattern that will be repeated several times throughout round 1. A taunt at the beginning, 5 uppercuts of dodge, a spin to duck, and then it repeats. The only way to earn stars using only single punches is to counter his taunt or to delay your punches into his slow uppercut. So what we do here is counter his flexit taunts and delayed uppercuts to earn stars, and you should have 3 total. When Macho is about to go idle, make sure to use a 3 star punch. If you perform it late, then it is possible that Macho will dodge it. From here, do the same thing, but instead of gathering 3 stars, gather 2 of them and then use your 2 star punch. Macho should have 6 HP left, which should give you enough wiggle room to punch him one more time to earn a star. What we have here is our setup going into round 2. Now because we didn't knock him out yet, his phase 1 pattern is still the same going into the second round. But that shouldn't matter anyway since the taunt is the only thing that is relevant. We hit him once to earn our second star, and because he only has less than 3 health left, this sends him down for our first knockdown and we're only a couple of seconds into our second round. Macho gets up, and then we earn our third star off of his work it taunt with a gut punch. The three star punch is used immediately, and then after that, we take a knockdown, and now the fun begins. Every time Little Mac gets knocked down, Macho will switch back and forth between throwing a quick uppercut or a slow uppercut. The quick one happens first though, but we're setting ourselves up for the later part of the fight, as well as resetting his pattern so we can earn a star clicker off of his work it taunt. Now here's the odd part, Macho can actually branch out between two different patterns here in phase 2. The one you see on top is the pattern that will happen first, but the pattern that you see at the bottom is the one you ideally want. He'll perform a slow uppercut and that allows you to earn a star quicker. Though I'm not exactly sure what causes him to switch between the two different patterns, it probably has something to do with the timer deciding on what Macho does the second he starts his taunt. Regardless, it's best to gather up 3 stars again and then use them before the timer crosses over 1 minute. You should be able to get him down before the 2 minute mark if he only does the top pattern, but it is worth noting that you can get the job done quicker if he does the bottom one. Now for the slightly simple part. His phase 3 pattern is the longest, but thankfully there are no branches or anything we have to worry about. You need to earn a star off of his Feel the Burn taunt with a well-timed gut punch and then wait for him to do a slow uppercut to earn a second star. Once he resets his pattern, he should go back to his beginning taunt in which you earn your third star. Use it immediately and then take an intentional knockdown. Since we already took one knockdown from before, this means Macho will begin the fight with a slow uppercut and then resume his phase 3 pattern afterward. Two stars are already earned, we should just have enough time to 3 star him before the round ends and we just took down Macho in 21 punches. Now, I wasn't surprised that it took a number this high, but it was slightly shocking to see that this fight can be done in one less punch compared to Hippo, a fight that I thought would take less compared to Macho when researching. With how everything lines up, I didn't bother checking to see if there's anything that could be done to save a punch. The only way for this number to go lower is if we defeat him in round 1, but we simply don't have enough time for us to do it. And now we are at the former champion of the whole game, Mr. Sandman. The last time we fought Sandman, we used a trick that involved using a star punch into his Dreamland Express, taking him down in 6 punches. And that is no different here, but there are some slight changes that we need to look at. If you recall from last time, Mr. Sandman's Dreamland Express attacks come out on a certain time in the fight. With Title Offense, they are actually coded into his pattern, so the only thing we need to watch out for is if he does a boot taunt or an uppercut, because we can now arrive at these attacks at pretty much any time in the fight. 
It's going to be just as hard to predict what he's going to do. If you have the right timing though, then you should be able to nail it for the first two phases, which puts us at 4 punches so far. Now for phase 3, he goes into his berserk mode where he throws raging wink uppercuts until he tires himself out. One of the instant knockouts listed here is use a star when he is tired during his berserk mode, and that's exactly what we are going to do here instead of using a Dreamland Express knockdown. We can earn a star off of any wink he does and then use that star once he is tired, or you can use it into his final wink, whichever one works. Using two punches in each phase like last time will give us a total of six punches. And yeah, with that, we have once again wrapped up our quest. It might have taken way more punches than contender mode, but a small part of me definitely expected this. So let's do a recount, adding everything up- Yeah, we're not done yet, we still have 5 more levels to cover. What, you thought I was gonna say 1, that being Donkey Kong? Well, no, I got 4 more on top of that. We will not only look at Donkey Kong, but we will also look at Gigamac and the 3 Doc Lewis levels and Doc Lewis's Punch-Out. Normally, I would just cover Donkey Kong and then call it a day, but I don't think these 4 levels deserve its own video, especially this one. Alright, on to the bonus fight, Donkey Kong. This fight is a bit of a wild card, as I already knew what the number of punches was going to be. It was just a matter of trying to perform it with everything lining up correctly. Donkey Kong has three instant knockdowns, but the only one that will be helpful for this challenge is to star punch him every time he leaps forward. Now the way you earn stars is by countering these very small and specific windows off of every taunt he does, with the one exception of him rolling forward with his tie in his eyes. His pattern is pretty consistent, but that all changes when it gets to the back of the ring. Donkey Kong's pattern when he goes to the back of the ring can change depending on what the timer is. We need to get him to do the one where he leaps and tries to crush you. Throw Star Punch into it and we can send down DK in two punches in every phase. This was already something that was pretty obvious first glance, it was just a matter of how it would be done given the circumstances I mentioned earlier. What we did in Phase 1 can be repeated in Phase 2 and Phase 3, beating Donkey Kong in 6 punches total. The hardest part is just trying to get him to perform that attack where he leaps forward so you can use a star to send him down. But luckily, I was able to construct a strategy that gets Donkey Kong to leap at you every time he goes to the back of the ring. It does require you to earn stars in specific spots just to make sure that the timer crosses over a certain point so he doesn't perform anything different. What I did in Phase 1 is counter his wing tongue after he walks forward. The window to earn a star is 3 frames. Going early or late will result in getting a hit but not earning a star or him retaliating. Dodge his next couple of moves and when he goes to the back of the ring, he should leap forward. Use your star punch and this will send Donkey Kong down. When he gets up, he will leap forward and perform an attack that is impossible to dodge. The only way to not get hit is to hit him out of it similar to the Aaron Ryan fights. But we can't do that here. As such, we will have to take it. You shouldn't have to worry about getting knocked down from it as that attack only does 20 damage. We avoid earning a star off of his dance here and instead earn a star off of his kiss taunt. Ignore his next move and he will go to the back of the ring to perform a leap. Star punch him again to instantly knock him down. When he gets up for a third time, we will have to take damage again from his low clap. From here, we wait until Donkey Kong performs his wing taunt like in phase 1 and this will send him to the back of the ring. He should perform his last leap. Star punch him while he does it and we can defeat Donkey Kong in 6 punches without any complications. Every star must be earned exactly how it was so he'll perform his leap attacks. Perhaps maybe it is possible to do it differently, but I didn't bother checking since the number of punches to beat him was the only thing that mattered to me. Before looking at the final 4 fights, let's do a recap on the 6 previous fights. Baron took us 11 punches with not much hassle, Soda took 18, Bull took 4 with the same idea as Contender, Macho took 21, and Sandman and Donkey Kong both took 6 punches total. So with that out of the way, it's time to look at possibly the biggest joke in our quest, Gigamech. For those who aren't aware, there's a 2 player mode in Punch-Out Weed that allows the player to turn into a giant form of themselves when they earn enough hits from the player glowing light blue. So I whipped out another weird mode to play this game mode, and yeah, since there are two players, I did question how I was going to do a punch count. I was thinking about only counting Little Mac, but I guess since I'm controlling two players and not one this time, I'll add up all the punches being thrown from both characters. When entering the fight, the first thing that came to my mind immediately was a speedrun strategy. Mystery Man does have a video of him performing a Giga Mac fight in 3896. As we can see here, Little... Um, wait, what's that guy's name? 
I don't know. I'll just call him Little Lack for now since he lacks character. I don't know. Anyway, enough of that. So Little Lack only seems to hit Little Mac when he flashes light blue, and this is used to fill up what I'm going to call the Giga Stanima. He has to do this five times total, and the Little Lack turns into a Giga version. Giga Lack needs to perform an attack by pressing 2 on the controller so that Little Mac can earn a star. After that, make sure Giga Lack performs a taunt by pressing left on the D-pad, and you need to make sure Little Mac throws a star punch for an instant knockdown. And yes, you will have to do this using two controllers. Unless you call a friend over and then have him or her do what you want them to do. So with this strategy, Little Mac threw only two punches total, and Little Lack threw only six punches total, with one of them getting countered. This brings us to eight total punches for the Giga Mac fight. So that's it for the mainline Punch-Out game. Now it's time to switch over to the sub game, Doc Lewis's Punch-Out. Before we get started, I just want to apologize for the low brightness. I downloaded this game on my old Wii using the Homebrew channel and unfortunately haven't figured out how to transfer it over to my Wii U for the sake of better quality. However, I could just do, um... There, that should be better. So we have three levels, warm-up, training, and sparring. For the sake of time, we are actually going to cover warm-up and training in the same session since they are both so similar. So Doc Lewis in these two levels is pretty standard and doesn't have a lot of special moves. He has no instant knockouts in either of these levels, but that isn't a huge concern since you don't have to knock him down three times like the other fighters. One knockout will do. So what you want to do here is gather up three stars using only three punches by countering his moves. You can use your 3 star punch whenever you please since Doc himself doesn't have a dodging animation like some of the levels in title defense. After that, gather up 2 stars from 2 of his attacks and then use your 2 star punch when he is idle. They took a 7 punches to take down Doc from the warm up mode. As for training, you can do exactly what you just did for the warm up as Doc Lewis doesn't have any tricks in this level. Okay, he does have one trick in the training mode. I haven't played Doc Lewis's Punch-Out in some time, but when writing the script, I already kinda knew that warm-up and training were going to be around 7, maybe possibly 8 punches if something got thrown in. However, one of the things that I forgot about was his chocolate bar. I knew it came out in the sparring mode, but completely forgot that in the training mode, if you get his health down to more than halfway, you'll pull off his chocolate bar and getting all of his health back, forcing us to start from square one. Despite this sounding like a big deal, the solution to this is actually really simple. The only thing you have to do is reorder your star punches around and take out Doc with a 3 star punch instead of a 2. With this reorder, we can defeat warm up and training in 7 punches. And with that, we only have one more fight left to talk about. The sparring mode. The only level that's completely different from warm up and training. Doc has the ability to go into his aggressive mode when you knock his chocolate bar out of his hand for the first time. He can pull out his chocolate bar several times in the fight the more you lower his health. This is bad for this challenge as it forces us to use an extra punch. Combine that with the fact that earning stars is a lot trickier this time around. So it seems to be that we might be going over 7 punches with this level seeing how the difficulty ramps up. Well, you be wrong. In fact, we can beat the sparring mode in only 4 punches. Remember how I said warm-up and training have no instant knockouts? There is a reason why I left out sparring mode when talking about that earlier. This level has two of them. 3 star punch into his quick feet Mac, or a 3 star punch into his move baby move. And since Doc only takes one knockdown, we don't have to worry about him pulling out his chocolate bar and potentially making things worse for us. The strategy should speak for itself. Earn 3 stars off of any attack he does that will reward them and then save it for when he does one of those two moves. Once he does either one of them, use the 3 star punch to send him down in only 4 punches. And with that, we just completed all of Punch Out Wii and the sub game Doc Loses Punch Out. It's time for us to do a punch count. If you guys have watched the previous video, then you would have seen that Contender Mode took us 87 punches. Title Defense took us 143, Donkey Kong and Gigamac took 14 punches, and Doc Loses Punch Out took 18 punches total. Batting everything up together brings us to a grand total of 262 punches to beat the entire Punch-Out! Wii game. And if you want to take away the Doc levels, then it'll be a total of 244. The one last possible thing to do is for someone to get this number in one run, which, come to think of it, makes getting 87 punches in the container mode look like child's play by trying to pull off the entire thing. 
Now, because I'm not that smart, I still wouldn't be surprised if maybe one or two fights can still go lower, so if anybody has any suggestions on how to lower the punch count, then please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. And with that, I am tired and need to get some rest. Bye.